Hi everyone, welcome back to my garden. Today we are talking about all things sweet potato. Sweet potato is one of my favorite permaculture plants. And so today I've put together 12 reasons why I think you should grow sweet potato in your home garden. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe because I have heaps more gardening tips and tricks to share with you. Okay, so number one is that you can eat the whole plant. Not only does it grow delicious tubers under the ground, but the leaves and stems are also edible as well. Butterfly. The sweet potato is actually not part of the potato family. It is part of the morning glory family. So you cannot eat the leaves of normal potatoes, whereas you can eat the leaves on the sweet potato. So I use these as I would spinach. You can put it, the young leaves fresh in a salad or a smoothie, or you can add them to curries, stir fries, soups, and you can also just make a side dish of greens by stir frying the young shoots with like butter and garlic, or my favorite, which is tamari or soy sauce, chili, garlic, and ginger. Just lightly stir fried in the pan and served as a side dish. It's so delicious. The second reason is that it produces a whole lot of food on one plant. So you don't need heaps of plants to be able to grow enough food for you and your family. They just produce bucketfuls of sweet potatoes. And because you can eat the leaves, you've got an endless supply of greens that you can eat throughout the year. So it's such an abundant plant that just produces so much food. And because it produces so much food, it is one of my base crops. It's something that I grow every year. And if you are wanting to start growing a lot more of your own food, having some base crops like pumpkins and sweet potatoes means that you can start building some really like wholesome dishes solely from the garden having a base crop like this so you can store these for a while if you once you've harvested them if you let them dry out a little bit so like half a day in some sun or diffuse sun to allow them to sort of harden on the outside then you can keep them somewhere dark and cool for a few weeks or even a few months um, until they start to sprout or go soft and spongy Another way to preserve your harvest is to make some meals out of them and freeze those. You can make a delicious curried sweet potato soup and then you can freeze portions of that so you can eat that throughout the year. Same with curries and soups, you can make some and then freeze those. Also if you have kids, you can make some baby food out of sweet potato and freeze that into like ice cubes and you'll have a quick and easy supply of that in the freezer. All right, number three is that it grows so quick and easy. It is such an easy plant to grow and once it gets going, it's off. It is a pretty low maintenance plant. You don't have to do much to it. It's quite drought resistant. So it will survive hot, dry weather, but it does need plenty of water if you want to produce a really good harvest. It loves warm weather, so it does really well in warm climates and subtropical climates. The soil needs to be free draining and doesn't really like clay or anything too boggy so that the soil isn't too wet and the tubers will start to rot. So nice drain free soil which you can build by using a lot of compost and organic matter. It's pretty pest resistant. Um, the leaves will start to get some holes here and there from bugs and whatnot but it takes quite a lot to actually make any sort of real damage on the plant so even if you do get a few holes in the leaves wouldn't worry too much it will still keep going um, the only other thing you need to consider really is rats um, once the tubers start growing they'll start coming up out of the soil so if they are exposed out of the soil you may have a you may have some trouble with rats um, getting to those so I just check every now and then and I often will harvest throughout the growing season and make sure that there is none above the surface number four is that they can be grown all year round. In our climate here in Perth, I can grow mine pretty much all year round. And I found the purple varieties seem to do a lot better than the orange ones in winter. But if you do live in a cooler climate or have a lot of frosts and cold weather over winter, you can um, just grow them annually. And if you wanna make sure you've got plants ready for the next season, just save a few tubers. Or when you're harvesting them, you can just leave some, chop some up or leave some in the soil and they'll just be dormant until next year 
when it is spring they will start to pop up when the soil warms up a bit or you can make some cuttings and keep them inside in glass jars or pro propagate them up into small pots and grow them indoors over winter as a nice lush houseplant and then come spring you can plant them out into the garden and start your sweet potato patch again. So number five why I love sweet potatoes is that you can harvest them in stages. You don't have to harvest them all at once. You can start by one end of the patch and pull some and dig them up and eat those and then once you're finished with those you just move on and dig up the next patch as long as you're harvesting them all before winter sets in um, and you get some frosts. The other way I like to harvest my sweet potatoes is what they call here in Australia bandicooting which is named after a little bandicoot which is like a little rat rabbit critter marsupial um, and they fossick around so that is sort of what, what it is named after. Just digging a little bit of the top layer of soil away and you'll feel some of the sweet potatoes that are there and you can just pick one or two for dinner. Number six is that you can propagate sweet potatoes so easily. So if you don't have any sweet potato growing in your garden you can just get a sweet potato from the farmers market and you can simply just bury this in the garden um, around spring when the summit when the soil is starting to warm up or chop it up into three and chuck that in the soil and they will start to grow from that you can also pop them in a jar of water until they start to root and then they will send off shoots. Once they've sent off shoots, you can, can cut them off, pop them in a glass of water, they all start to send off roots. You, then you can plant them in the garden and just keep harvesting shoots off your sweet potato that's in the water. Sort of using that as a, like a little mini sweet potato farm. Once you do have an established patch of sweet potato, you can just cut off parts of the vine, or they are called slips, and replant them in the garden. You can either plant them straight in the garden or put them in a jar of water um, until they send off roots then you can plant these back into the garden. If you want to learn more about growing sweet potatoes from cuttings or from the tuber then I have a page on this in my ebook which is how to grow food from cuttings. I will pop the link to that in the description. Number seven is that there's heaps more varieties that you can grow of sweet potato than the ones that you find at the supermarket. At the supermarket you get the usual orange and the red one um, but there's also the Hawaiian, which is white with a purple inside. And I've got another one, which is purple on the outside and purple on the inside. Just super fun to grow. They all have slightly different flavors and textures and they cook differently. So it is nice that I'm able to grow different varieties and use them for different things. Number eight is that they are an amazing living ground mulch. The vines grow really thick and lush along the ground which protects the soil and creates a really good habitat for your beneficial insects to live in. Sweet potato makes an excellent bottom layer of your food forest. It will cover the soil, protect the soil, it will be growing food, it is a habitat for beneficial insects. Number nine is that it grows in sun or shade. So it does prefer full sun but it can also grow in shade. So it's really flexible in the garden if you have a spare spot it will probably grow there. I've actually found here in Perth our summers are so hot and so intense that my sweet potato actually prefers a little bit of shade to full sun. Hey bird. Here come the birds. So yeah it's a super versatile plant that can grow in heaps of different spots in your garden. Number 10 is that you can grow it in the garden or in containers. Because it's such a vigorous growing plant if you don't have a lot of space it might be better for you to grow this in a container because it will take off and if you have sm any small little plants that are growing it will overtake them and shade them out so if you are limited on space it might be best to have it contained don't be afraid to like whack off the edges if it is getting Don't be afraid to cut off the edges. Mine is like creeping out onto the grass and I just mow over it. Um, it's fine, it just keep growing. Number 11 is that you can use it as animal food. So if you are cutting off heaps because it's just getting too wild, you can chuck that in for the chickens as chicken food. Um, rabbits and pigs as well will eat 
the sweet potato leaves and it's full of lots of vitamins and nutrients for them and if you do have animals like chickens eating your sweet potatoes you can then also use the composted manure to put in your garden and grow more sweet potatoes and you've got a full sustainable cycle and the last one number 12 is that you can save money sometimes sweet potatoes are super expensive to buy the other day the red ones in Perth were like over nine dollars a kilo and for such a for a plant that's so easy to grow and grows a whole lot of food on one plant I would definitely recommend growing this in your home garden it is such an economical plant to grow and that is it for this video as you can tell I could talk all day about sweet potato so it is one of my favorite permaculture plants because it's so versatile and it has so many different beneficial relationships um, in the garden if you've got any questions about how to grow or harvest your sweet potato or even propagating them leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you if you found this video helpful please give it a like and share it with your friends sharing it will help me reach more people so that I can inspire and help others grow their own food at home make sure you hit subscribe and I will see you all next week for another video Bye.